So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, new video. Where uh, in the last video we had uh, left with the module four model paper solutions and we had discussed the question seven A and seven B. Okay. So I didn't uh, continue the video of question number eight because it would be a long video, lengthy video. So that's why. So in this video, now I'm going to discuss with question number eight A and eight B because uh, these two questions require the uh, uh, a lot of explanations along with uh, some of the concepts you need to be uh, knowing. Okay, so the question uh, is uh, that in this session we are going to start question number eight A. Again, those who have not seen my previous videos uh, where we have discussed the, the first four modules of model paper solutions of the subject intelligent systems and machine learning algorithms. Okay, you can go through it. It is available in my channel playlist. You can go and search it and uh, access that. Okay, also this PDF would be available in the description. Go and check it out. Also, please like this video before you uh, move further because your like would be very valuable to us. So, please like this video. So, yeah, let us start now. 8A. So, this question says that how does the concept learning approach work? Okay, that is how the concept learning approach in the, in the machine learning, how does it uh, impact the machines and how it be, be useful for learning purpose? How does the concept learning approach work? And what is the candidate elimination algorithm? Okay, this candidate elimination algorithm is a fixed question. You might be expecting this question in the exam also. Okay, so please uh, make a, a concentrate and listen to me, listen to it very carefully. First is concept learning. Concept learning uh, in machine learning involves acquiring general concepts from specific training examples. These concepts can be seen as the Boolean valued functions that classify instances as either positive or negative examples. Okay. So, uh, this can be considered as Boolean valued in instances that is the zeros and ones values, okay, that classify instances either positive uh, for uh, either positive or negative example. Uh, for positive instances as well as negative instances, it would be providing you some kind of information where it should be useful for you to execute that machine, okay. The goal of concept learning is to infer this Boolean valued function from training examples that provide input and output values, okay. Uh, one way to think of concept learning is the search through hypothesis space. Okay, this hypothesis space is very important where some of the uh, certain set of instances that is predictable instances would be providing uh, to a machine where uh, the machine would be giving uh, uh, be given some of the certain set of hypotheses where that would be that should be functioned and then uh, related to that hypothesis provided they would be giving you some other training instances. Okay. The learner is given a set of training examples, each of which consists of an instance and its classification, either positive as well as negative, that is either yes or no, okay, for that particular task, whether it suits good or not, okay. The learner's job is to find a hypothesis that is consistent with all the training examples, okay. The learner's job is to find the hypothesis that is the correct algorithm we should be finding, the learner should be finding that and we should be checking whether it is consistent or not for that particular work, okay. With all the training examples provided. So, with that only, with the candidate elimination algorithm would be working. The candidate elimination algorithm is one approach to concept learning. It maintains a version space that represents the set of all types of hypotheses which is consistent with the observed training examples. Okay, the version space. Okay, what is the version space? The version space is like a state space where it would be giving you a certain set of instances. Okay, and uh, you should be predicting whether they are consistent or inconsistent. Okay, uh, that particular set of uh, training instances is called as a version space. Okay, the version space is represented by its most general and least general members. Okay, which form general as well as specific hypothesis separately. Okay, this general hypothesis as well as specific hypothesis, these all comes under the version space. Okay, general and specific boundary sets or hypothesis respectively. These boundaries delimit the version space within the partially ordered hypothesis space. Okay. Here's now uh, the candidate algorithm works. Let us see how it works. First is the initialization part. First, general as well as specific hypothesis. G is initialized the set of maximally general hypothesis in the hypothesis space H. Okay. S is initialized to the set of maximally specific hypothesis in hypothesis space H. Okay. The initialization of general as well as specific hypothesis, hypothesis you should be making first. Okay. Next is the iterative refinement that is for each positive training example, remove from G any hypothesis which is inconsistent, that is, which is not matching that uh, set of uh, training example in that particular instance. 
which is not, which is inconsistent, that is, which is different from each other, that should be removing from the set of general hypothesis with the example. Okay. Again, remove from S any hypothesis which is inconsistent with the example. Okay. Well, what should be doing for general? The same should be applying for specific as well. Add to S all the minimal generalizations of the removed hypothesis that are consistent with the example and more specific than some member of G. Okay. Next, we have remove S any hypothesis more general than other hypotheses. For each negative training example, for negative training example, what you should be doing is remove from S any hypothesis which is inconsistent with the example. Remove from G any hypothesis which is inconsistent with the example. Okay, you should be removing one one hypothesis which is inconsistent in both the cases, either H, uh, S as well as G. Okay, for a negative training instance. Add to G all minimal specifications of the removed hypothesis that are consistent with the example and more general than some member of S. Okay, so this whole algorithm we are going to be seeing with an example of uh, uh, Enjoy sports concept. Okay, in that let us they will be giving you some set of training instances that I'm going to show you. Uh, using that, let us uh, try to analyze that example also. Okay, yeah. So here is the an illustrative example of enjoy sport. Okay, so this is the complete theory part. Okay, where uh, this is the set of uh, general hypothesis. Okay, see general hypothesis where all the question marks are there. That is uh, any uh, the values be unpredictable. So that's why the it would be a set of all question marks. And the most specific hypothesis that is phi, okay, which is predictable, and we could be predicting by checking for the general hypothesis. So this is the set of specific hypotheses. So yeah, let us now check the illustrative example of the enjoy sport concept, and let us try to understand this candidate algo uh, eliminate algorithm in a better way. Okay, now let us see that. So here is the example of enjoy sport concept where they would be they had they have given here the some of the training instances as you see here in this table. Okay. There are there are four training instances here, one, two, three, four. Okay, where they would be giving you the condition of sky, temperature, humidity, wind, water, and forecast. Okay. Yeah. And enjoy sport. What is the enjoy sport say for this particular instance? Okay. When sky is sunny, temperature is warm. Humidity is normal, wind is strong, water is warm, and forecast is same. For this condition, the enjoy sport says that it is yes. Okay. Yeah. Because it is a, so, we can say that this is a positive training instance. Similarly, for second uh, example, also you can see it's a positive training instance. Again, we next we have no. So, we can say that whenever it is no, this is a negative training instance and it would be affecting the algorithm and we would be we are checking for the change. Okay. And the fourth instance is also a positive instance. Okay. Next, see the candidate el eliminate algorithm that I already discussed. So, this is the set of general hypothesis, set of all question mark. Also, initializing the S boundary set must contain the specific, that is, least general hypothesis. Okay. So, this is the specific hypothesis. Okay. Now, check the algorithm. An illustrative example you see here first set of S0, that is, the specific hypothesis. Now, S1. S1, we, sh we should be taking the first uh, training instance. Okay. Whatever is the set of first training in instance from the table, that only you take it. Okay, so now if you check for the S2 now, what change you could be seeing here is, if you compare S1 and S2 first and second training instance, uh, where, in which point there is change, okay, that you should be checking for inconsistency. So, in the first and second training instance, both are having a, a positive instance, so that's why it would be easy to say that these two are consistent, sunny, sunny, warm, warm, strong, strong, warm, warm, same, same. So, here in this part only, it is inconsistent. So, whenever it is inconsistent, right, you should be ch changing that in the second set of algorithm and you should be writing a question mark wherever the change is taking place. Okay, in the uh, second set, well, in the first we have normal, in the second we have high. So that's why we are having a change that is inconsistent. Whenever they have a inconsistent, should be applying uh, one question mark for the general hypothesis under the second set of specific hypothesis. So, this is the value of H2 now, sunny, warm, question mark, strong, warm, same. Okay. Also, the general hypothesis won't be getting affected because we are not having any change. So, that's why for G0 up to G2, the values remain the same. That is the set of question mark only. Okay. Yeah. Now, for the next set training example, if you, if you check for S2 and S3, okay. If you check for uh, S2 and S3 here, we have S2, S3, sunny, warm, question mark, strong, warm, same. Why? Because see here, if you compare second and third instance, 
uh, the uh, complete set is only inconsistent. So if we have your consistent positive training instance, and here again we have changed your rainy, cold, high, strong, warm change. But if you check here, it won't be affecting any uh, general hypothesis. Won't be getting added because if you see that we have from positive, it is turning on to negative training instance. Okay, whenever we have a positive to negative training instance, we should not be uh, checking for any algorithm, and we should be whatever is written in S two. That only you should be shifting in S3 because we can say that uh, it is a negative training instance. Okay, whatever is there at S2, copy back to S3. So that's why we don't have any change in S2 and S3. It should be remaining the same. But in G3, we would be having change. Okay, wherever uh, we can see the change from uh, S2, uh, second and third instance, from that position you should be writing. Okay, see here. So in the from second to third, we have a change from sunny to rainy. Okay, so that's why, and here. Warm and cold, and here we have same and change. So we are having three separate set of uh, instances. We are having three changes. So that's why what changes you should be making in the general hypothesis is so the value of H two second instance from uh, sunny it is changing to rainy. So mention sunny and rest all the five you mentioned it as question mark. Okay, this is the first set. Second set where was in the we should be considering the second change that is warm. From warm it is changing to uh, from warm it is changing to cold so that's why you mentioned the warm okay and then the set of all question marks similarly last third set uh, the third change that is from same chain okay so mention it as same okay these all are compared with g2 okay well, g2 is this set and the, from this set uh, it would be divided into these three subsets of g3 okay and similarly it goes on for s3 and s4 uh, that is compare third and fourth so instance here if you check for third and fourth instance, you can see that uh, one one change is here. Okay, so that's why here we would be getting one change here. We would be uh, getting one question mark here. So here also G four also the same thing. Okay, since it is from negative instance to positive instance, so again we should be checking for the change in the general hypothesis. So from G three, this would be getting changed to G four. Okay, yeah. So this is the final set of algorithm for uh, candidate eliminate algorithm for the uh, enjoy sport concept. Okay, you can check it out how it is, how it works along with the explanation in C1. Okay, yeah. So, with this, we had discussed in brief about the candidate eliminating eliminate algorithm. The whole answer, I've tried to explain it. Okay, you can you hope you have listened to it. So, now let us discuss one more question in this video and let us wind this video up. 8b What is biased hypothesis space and why it is important in machine learning? Okay, so in machine learning, a biased hypothesis space is one that does not include all possible hypotheses that could be used to represent the target concept. Okay, this bias arises from the limitations or assumptions uh, imposed on the types of uh, hypotheses considered by the learning algorithm. For example, you can see here if the hypothesis space only includes some of the linear functions, that is, if the hypothesis space is very linear in nature and it does not depend on any other algorithms. Okay, uh, then it will be biased against representing non linear relationships. That is, okay, understanding the concept of biased hypothesis spaces is crucial in machine learning for several reasons. Okay, uh, why it is important in machine learning, let us try to see uh, some of the points are limitations on learnability. Okay, that is a biased hypothesis space can prevent an algorithm from learning the true target concept. Okay, from learning a true target concept, it would be completely uh, ignoring, so that is why it would be misguided. Okay, yeah. If the algorithm is restricted to searching within a limited set of hypotheses, it may fail uh, to find an accurate representation even with an abundant data. So, this is one point. Next, we have impact on generalization. The inductive bias of a learning algorithm, which is influenced by its hypothesis space, determines how the algorithm gen uh, generalizes from observed training data to unseen examples. A biased hypothesis space can lead to overfitting and underfitting, as I have told you in earlier. What is overfitting and underfitting? Depending on the nature of the bias the, and the complexity of the true target concept. Okay, so generalization means again I have told you in general uh, hypothesis. What is basically a general hypothesis for inconsistency? We will be, we will be putting you a set of question marks, right? So if general general hypothesis would be getting uh, affected by these question marks. How it is affected? Because if you see from negative instances, the general hypothesis would be getting changed. Okay. That's why for positive instances, it does not get changed. So, that is the main impact of this generalization. Next, we have efficiency in 
learning. While a very large hypothesis space might seem ideal for covering diverse concepts, it can significantly increase the computational cost and complexity of the learning process. A carefully chosen bias can help to constrain the search space to a more manageable size while still allowing for effective learning. Okay, so this is the efficiency in learning. The choice of hypothesis space and the resulting inductive bias is a fundamental design uh, decision in machine learning. It involves a trade off between expressiveness, complexity, and generalization. Okay, so these are the trade off relationships between for an hypothesis space resulting in an inductive bias. Okay. For instance, or for example, let us consider the enjoy sport algorithm only. Okay, if you see here, the enjoy sport example in the sources illustrates the concept of biased hypothesis space. Where the biased hypothesis space means they would be they would be giving you the set of training instances, and looking at that training instances, we can say that uh, it is whether it is consistent or in, inconsistent because they had given the enjoy sport whether it is positive or negative training instance. Okay, based on that, we can uh, say that this is a biased hypothesis space. The initial hypothesis space limited to conjunctions of constants. That is, in initial hypothesis space, they won't be giving you the fixed uh, value uh, whether the training instance is positive or negative, providing they would be giving you the relationship between the two training instances. Okay, yeah. This space cannot represent concepts that involve disjunctions or negation, such as sky is equal to sunny or sky is equal to cloudy. Okay, so these two are completely negations. Okay, that it does not involve the disjunctions. Okay. Therefore, the algorithm using H, this hypothesis H, would be biased and unable to learn the true concept if it is required in such logical operations. Okay. To address these things, we are having these uh, things here. You can check it out uh, to address these situations. Uh, then in summary, we are written the summary points as well. You can note it up. Okay. So, these are the few points which you need to be knowing. Yeah. So, that's all for this video, guys. I had discussed the, the questions of candidate elimination algorithm and biased hypothesis space 8a and 8b in this video so those who have liked this video you can uh, hit a like button and subscribe to our channel and uh, in the next video i'm going to discuss with module 5 model paper solutions so stay tuned for that as well so hope you understood something from this video please like this video and comment down your precious opinions about uh, how you like this video so that's all for this video guys please do support us guys and all the best for the exams thank you